Hi everyone. Welcome to the updated, yeah, the updated academic planner for 2021 through 2022. I know this is really early, but in years past, I feel really bad about this. I have not been really early. I usually like say I'll get it out in the spring and then I get it out in June. So this time around, two things. One, it is definitely on time. And two, if you want to print this in bulk with an overseas vendor, then you have plenty of time. So they're just a little slower right now because of everything going on and shipping delays and everything else so the sooner you can start the better uh if you are if you have not purchased um the academic calendar it is available the updated dates are in there as well as the older ones so i will show you all of that today so if you're new here and you're just popping on i'm lisa this is pretty fabulous and we create planner templates and other stuff i guess <laughs> We just make a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see who is here. Hey, Melanie. Hi, Tammy. This is also multi-streaming to Crowdcast as well. So I see over on Crowdcast, we have Sharice. Hello, gorgeous. We have Leah. Hey, girl. Uh, so hi, everyone. So I am trying to broadcast to YouTube and to Crowdcast at the same time. Uh, I think you guys remember I said I'd gotten rid of Crowdcast and then I realized there's no way, other way to do private video. So I re-signed up for Crowdcast. Um, Darlene, hey Darlene. All right, so if you have it already, go ahead and open it up. Let me share my screen. I'm gonna have to share my whole screen and I know I have a bigger monitor. I have one of those XDRs. So it might look a little small, but because of the way Adobe InDesign is, there's no other way to share it, if that makes sense. Otherwise you'll miss, I've done that before where I just try to share like the application and then you end up missing all of the tabs at the top. I don't know why it does that. Um, okay, I think this is screen one. So you see a weird picture in picture. All right, there we go. I'm gonna move this over. And now we are inside of this InDesign file. Let me try to make it bigger. Let's see, opening up too many things. So let's quit out of Photoshop. There we go. And I'll try to make this smaller. All right, so here, I know you're all waiting, is the new cover. So every year I try to do something colorful because it's the academic calendar, but not something cheesy. I don't know, I look forever for something because there were cute little school buses and um, crayons. And then I was like, but that's like a kid's academic calendar. This is meant to be like an adult's or semi-adult's uh, academic calendar. Or I don't know, if you're homeschooling your children, you could use it for that too. So this is the new, um, planner cover. So how this works is if you can see here, this is just an object all by itself. So this background, you could reuse it for something else. Um, you could delete it entirely. So if I just hit the select it and hit the delete button, it's totally gone if you don't like it and you can replace it with something else. So I told you I'd tell you how to swap in different covers. So if you go to past covers uh, over here, so I think I have so here's a past cover uh, from, let's see, alternate covers. Yeah, so we have, I don't know if you guys remember this, the pink with the dots. Um, we have the pencil cover. Uh, so let's say you like any of these or maybe the one just the year past or you want to create different covers for different purposes. Maybe you want to create a teacher planner and add some teacher pages in the front or a college planner and add, you know, sorority, Greek, life, varsity kind of things there. Um, you could do that as well. So you could differentiate. So let's just talk about how to make these different. So what you do is you go into the links folder of your previous version. So like this is the calendar, uh, the cover for last year. So you can see just like this one is just the background all by itself. It's the same thing inside of the links folder, you're going to find that background all by itself. So what you could do is you could come out here and just replace it there. Now, obviously it's not sized correctly, so you're gonna have to resize it a little. So you can go over to this site selection tool and you can just drag it down. So it is filling up the whole area. And then you can go to the bigger tool that has those blue lines and you can stretch it out to the edge. Stretch out to the edge, yeah. 
And then obviously, let's go back here to this tool and then just pull this all the way out to the edge. There you go. So now that's your new, your new cover. So obviously the pencil is an icon, I should say obviously, but what I tried to do is the pencil is an icon that's supposed to match each year's cover. So you can see this clearly matches the next, this year's cover and not this one. Um, inside of here, you're going to find the pencil logo that goes with it. So you can just go over here and drag that on top instead. So now you have the new one and obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, but maybe you want this to match that purple color. Uh, so you can go over here to the type tool and are actually, they've changed Adobe around a little bit. So I think you have to go to type and then you're gonna go to character and now you'll see the type tool um, and then you can change the colors. So I don't know if that's not it either. Hold on, window, workspace, typography. There we go. Now I think we can see the color. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, there we go. So now we can change it. You have some colors already in here inside the template, uh, so you could change it to that purple. And there it is. Uh, so that's how you change the cover covers. You swap them in and out. Um, so over here, so everything here is still the same as you go through this planner. Um, and let's see. The dates are different. Hopefully they're correct. I've proofread them twice this time. So fingers crossed that they're right. Uh, I found some typos that I had the first time. I don't even know. Like, I feel like I'm very concentrated on numbers. Like I'm like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and I still like make a mistake. I don't know. Maybe my eyes glaze, glaze over, but I had this checked twice and I had a second person check it as well. So let me know if there's any typos. Fingers crossed there are none. It should be perfect. Um, so basically, it's just like it was before. There is a minor difference. I believe last year's file, I did not make master pages for the printable. And this year I changed it. I think it was, I think it was Sharice actually who was like, ah, there's no master pages. I don't know which version it was. I think it was this one. So now the master pages are such that. If you see these, and again, if you don't want to know what master pages are, let me take a step back. Go to window, go to pages, and then it'll bring up this pages panel here on the right. Now, in this pages panel, on the top are master pages, and on the bottom, where this like very, very faint line is, those are where the actual pages of the document are. So here's what uh, here's what you want to do. So if you want to change anything that's on one of these uh, not the, weekly, the weekly pages, right? So like, let's say I don't like Sunday because I'm French. I don't know. And I want to say, uh, I don't even know what it is. Samedi, vendredi. I don't remember what the French word is. <laughs> I should have used a different language. Anyways, so when you notice when you go here, I can't do anything. I can't click it. And that's because it's on the master page. So if I go to the left weekly, it's still freaking out from that. Now I can change it. So now I can go over here and I can call this uh, the new Sunday or something like that. Uh, obviously, you'll have to move the text box a little bigger to accommodate the extra letters. Um, but that's how you would change it. Now, because I changed it on this master page, when I go into a weekly, so you can see it says B, every page that has B applied to it will now say the new Sunday. You got the new Sunday and you got the new Sunday. So now you don't have to worry about going in and changing it on every single one. It's in the master pages. Uh, same thing, this is the right side because remember it's a two page spread. So over here, like maybe you don't like meeting states, fun, you wanna change it to something else like gratitude or uh, appointments or reminders or whatever you wanna say to kind of make it your own. If you change it here, it will be changed in the whole document. So every single page that has C applied to it, as you can see is the right half of HC, it will, it will propagate there. Same thing with all these colors, right? So if you don't like this color and you're like, you know what, pink is really just a little too girly for me. I'm gonna make my whole planner dark blue and gold or something. So now that I've changed it here, when I go into anything that has the letter C applied, now I can see that it is all dark blue. It's all dark blue it's all dark blue, it's not pink anymore. So that's basically pretty much all you need to know. Like these dated calendars are super easy because 
there's not a lot to change. All the dates are the same. Really, you're just changing the colors, maybe the font, something else. Uh, so that is everything. I know it's like the shortest tutorial ever, right? Do you guys have any questions? Let me just double check. Um, where's StreamYard? Uh, Darlene, happy Friday. I really like this new cover. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Tammy, ooh, I love the new cover. Cover. Tammy, Lisa, is it possible to buy or get a cover that you used for another planner that I don't want, I don't have from your shop? No, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I can barely get these planner templates out as is. I don't know, I can't sell the covers separately. Um, I'm not saying I can't ever, but I've actually never had that request. I think if maybe more people request it, then I could create like a cover template library or something maybe. Um, Tammy, I have a lot of planners from the shop, but like one that's in one of your pop-up shop planners. Uh, yeah, you'd have to buy the pop-up shop planner. <laughs> Plus those pop-up shop planner covers, I'm not even sure if they're all interchangeable, like this one where the background is just sort of uh, text agnostic, if that makes sense. Is that the right word? Agnostic, like text independent from the image. Uh, so it might not even be possible to change it. So. Um, is anybody else interested in having co like a cover library? Um, Tam, awesome, I just bought mine, thank you. Oh, great. All right, so if those, there are no questions, I am actually going to just go ahead and quit this broadcast and then go right into the digital planner one, but I'm gonna make it separate because if you only bought the digital, you probably don't wanna sit through all this. <laughs> um, Melanie. Pardon me if too soon. Do you have an update on updating Planner 101 class? I don't. You know, it's funny. I was thinking, like, I have to make a decision. Remember how I'm just doing one thing a week? So next week, because it's the last week of January, I think I'm going to do the self-confidence planner. It is like one of those things, like the self-confidence of the plan. Like, everyone's been waiting for months and months. So, like, one versus the other. So I said I wanted to do a pop-up shop planner one per month. So I think I'm going to finish that instead of doing the planner 101 course. <laughs> Hope that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, Melanie, cover library would be awesome. Oh, all right. Well, I will put that on the list for another week, not this week. Uh, Christina, hello. How are, how are you? Great. Thanks. All right, guys. I am ending this broadcast. Oh wait, Sharice, I made mine for teens and use abstract digital papers. It was a hit. Oh, great. Um, I love that you put in the master pages, color changes, I had to pay someone on Fiverr to change the colors. Also, do you plan to make a few pages that would be good for a teacher? You know, that's a great question. I will check with, do I have any teacher friends? If you have suggestions for teacher friends, I've looked around and, um, so here are my thoughts on that. So I've seen other teacher planners where they actually have grades in them, right? They check grades, they have assignments and things like that. And I feel like, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like all teachers have things electronically already available to them. So my friend Courtney, who I run the Cozy Mystery, uh, the Cozy Escape book club with, she does technology. She's a technology librarian or library tech she, she doesn't fix computers, but she does all of the e-learning for teachers, not for the students, like teaching them how to use their computers to be more tech savvy and help them with their job. I'll double check with her, but I think everything's on the computer now. Um, the computer. Now I sound like one of those old people. It's out there on the internet. Uh, so let me double check because I kind of have a feeling that it might all be automated for them. And so it might be redundant, but maybe they do like to just write things down or maybe they liked it for planning or something else. So I will definitely check. That is a great suggestion. So I will see you back here in like two minutes to edit the digital planner if that's something that you guys have. Uh, 